Hello, Real Life Ministries in Lakeland uh, School District. I'm speaking specifically to you, uh, both as a part of our church, but I know this will also be being used um, by the Lakeland School District in our community. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jim Putman. I'm the senior pastor at Real Life Ministries. Uh, we're one church in four locations, and one of our locations is in uh, Lakeland a School District up in the, the uh, Athol Spirit Lake area. This is Jim Blazon, who's the campus lead there for our, camp, uh, our campus. And I'm here, I'm privileged to be here with the superintendent of schools in the Lakeland School District. Uh, this is Lisa Arnold. And uh, I wanted to say thank you for coming here and thanks for, for being here, guys. Thank you um, for the invitation. Here's what we're doing today. Uh, we're making you aware, for those of you uh, who live in the Lakeland School District, I live in the, in the Lakeland School District, so does uh, yep. uh, Jim. Um, we are uh, helping you understand a little bit about uh, how the uh, school districts work in the state of Idaho. We're doing that for a couple of reasons. We know that many of you have moved to the area and you're not quite sure of how it works in the state of Idaho. And oftentimes uh, we watch the national media and we don't necessarily understand what's happening locally. And, I, and we're blessed in North Idaho in particular uh, to not uh, deal with the same issues that are happening in the rest or many of the other mm -hmm. states in the country. And we, we uh, rather than beat up our people here with something that's not happening here, we want you to know uh, we're, we are blessed here uh, with, with some of the leaders in the school districts in, uh, around here. And so um, we have been in a partnership with the Lakeland School District for years and uh, a friendly uh, partnership where we work together. We serve the same people in the community and uh, it's been uh, just a, a blessing for us and I believe for Lakeland as well. You know, um, we are gonna uh, ask some questions of, of Lisa today so that you can hear straight from her. And then uh, we're gonna share a little bit about our opinions as, the pa as pastors in this area. But Lisa, would you explain for those who uh, are, are not from this area or those who maybe are brand new voting in the area or maybe uh, involved in a different way, mm -hmm. what is unique about the way school is um, funded in North Idaho or in Idaho in itself? In Idaho in itself? Um, sh I would love to explain Good. that. <laughs> uh, public school funding in Idaho is a pretty complex uh, formula with a lot of indexes. But um, in 2006, uh, Governor Risch, who was kind of the interim governor uh, for three months, moved uh, the, the funding from property tax to sales tax. Um, prior to 2006, uh, on average, homeowners paid $4.53 per thousand dollars of uh, assessed value of their home directly to Boise, and then that money was redistributed back to schools. In 2006, Governor Risch wanted to reduce property tax um, taxes for Idahoans, and so moved funding from property taxes to sales tax. And as you know, the sales tax fluctuates depending on the economy. Um, it didn't generate as much money as property taxes did, and so um, there, there is a gap between what we used to get and what we currently get. And uh, while that can be problematic for school districts, it also does provide opportunities for the communities that the school districts, districts serve to have a lot of voice in what mm -hmm. we do and how we do it. You're talking about you added, they added a levy system. Correct. So 75% comes from the state. 25% comes from a levy in the state of Idaho every two years they have to do it, right? So in statute, you can run a supplemental levy for one year or two years, but that's the maximum. And so we choose to do it for two. Because everybody wants to have one of these things every year. <laughs> It's, I know, it's, and it's not my favorite thing to do, that's for sure. This is not why you got into no, education. I, I actually oh. enjoy educating kids. Yeah, yeah, but they <laughs> but, have to play the political and financial right, part. Yeah. Right, and in, in Lakeland, um, our community has always been really supportive of the small neighborhood school concept, which requires more staff than the state uh, allocates for us. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, just really quick math, 
um, the way the state does the salaries is they take all of our teachers and they put them on their on the salary schedule at the state level and figure adds them all together and divides by the number of teachers and so if we say let's pretend that that's uh, 10 million dollars that we're going to get from the state and let's pretend that the state is saying that we're going to give we're going to pay for 200 teachers for you that's fifty thousand dollars a person um, which is just barely what the state says the minimum wage for teachers mm. is but we don't have 200 teachers we have 250 teachers because we have small neighborhood schools so now you're dividing 10 million by 250,000 and we're actually getting less than from the state than what we're mandated by state law to pay and so our levy helps um, kind of fill in the gap and those aren't real numbers obviously but just hypothetically um, easy numbers to understand but when you have small neighborhood schools um, which, by the way, is because you want smaller classroom sizes. Right, and we want kids to be known. You know, right. when you have, when you have large schools of, uh, a high school of seventeen hundred or two thousand, it's really easy yeah. for kids to fall through the cracks. We could have one high school in Lakeland. We've got a Lakeland High School's right just under nine hundred, and Timberlake High School's at five fifty. So we could have a school of fourteen hundred and fifty kids. But when you do that. Um, your opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities, that go, those opportunities go down because you're competing now against more people for mm -hmm. spots. Um, you have two you, football teams, now you only have one. Exactly. And then yeah. you, and then just from an administrator standpoint as a former principal, I knew the name of every one of my kids mm -hmm. in school um, at, at my elementary school and, and they would stop and say to me, how do you remember my name? Mm -hmm. And I could say to them, I remember your name because your name identifies who you are. That's mm -hmm. important. And mm -hmm. because I care about you, mm -hmm. it's important to me mm -hmm. to know your name. Mm -hmm. When you have, you know, twice as many kids in a school, it's it's just that much harder to mm -hmm. do that. And so the it's the personal connections um, between teachers and kids and administrators and kids. Um, that I think makes a, a big difference in how kids do when they're in school. So yeah. we could have larger schools, which allows you to distribute kids so you don't need quite as many staff. But I don't think that's what's best for kids. And so far, mm -hmm. our community has said the same thing. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say this also. When you're talking about levy, one of the things that happens is it's uh, what you're saying is the amount of money that comes from uh, the state doesn't pay the basics mm -mm. Um, and when some people people think about levies they think about the levies pay for your extra uh, well no when you when you look at the way our system runs here uh, the it, it's not the extra it's no, the basics it's the basics no it's, it's 25 percent right yeah it's 25 percent of, of the our... of the income yeah mm -hmm. so um, and again then you have to go well what what do you consider even extra like right. sports is that it doesn't only cover sports like things but mm -hmm. sports is how I graduated from high school I don't have sports I would have never I was ADHD kid you know struggle in school the the coaching the life lessons there carried me through the rest of it so what do you consider extra right uh, is an important question well and I, and I think that actually leads to a really um, a, a I, I guess a bigger idea is that, um, you know, when our high schools graduate 100% of our seniors in any given year, um, those kids are leaving school, going off to do something with their lives, whether they're going into the workforce or going into the military, they're going to some sort of college uh, post-secondary certification. They're going to be productive citizens and because we have such a high graduation rate. Um, we don't have any crime in our communities. Our, when kids drop out of school, you, you start to see crime rates coming mm -hmm. up because they don't have anything else to do with their time, so they're mm -hmm. gonna get themselves into trouble. Um, when you have successful, strong school system, you have strong communities. And so that's the other part of that is when you have those activities, you're talking about the extracurricular, and it's not just athletics, but it's FFA and Business Professionals of America, mm -hmm. 
FCCLA, I mean, there are lots of acronyms in public education, but right. um, all really good things for kids when they have something that they can, they're connected to, that they're participating in, that keeps them in school, um, that's good for the community. And, and there, there is no money from the state for any of our athletics extracurriculars. Um, in fact, when you look at our budget and, and what the levy is covering this time around, the state doesn't even pretend to fully pay for anything. So for transportation, for example, they, we get 85% of what we spent last year for transportation. So that doesn't take any inflationary costs, fuel costs, none of that into account and it's not even 100% of what we spent last year it's only 85% mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. last year our district paid a, a million dollars more for transportation than what we received from the state for transportation wow. so and transportation is a privilege it's not a right it's not something we are absolutely obligated to provide but how do you get kids to right. school if you can't provide transportation um, and the state isn't funding it for us, so that's part well, of the levy. Well, even when you think about this, I, I came from an education family. Uh, I have three sisters that are in the education. I graduated being education. Um, you know, when you think about what the state's paying and you're thinking about salaries to teachers, um, you're thinking about, it, they don't, school teachers in Idaho don't get paid uh, in comparison to other states as well. Mm -hmm. Now you talk about um, what it costs to actually live here, yep. housing market, all of those things. Um, it, it, we're impacting uh, a, a whole community through a public school system. Some people ask, you know, me, uh, and, and Jim, you're in the same boat. I don't have a kid or a grandkid in the public school system. Yeah. Um, I had one of my kids graduate from Lakeland, one of them from a Christian school, one of them didn't. Right, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm for all three of those things: homeschool, Christian school, public school. I'm mm -hmm. for all three of those things. Um, I'm for teachers and parents that commit themselves to teaching their kids and involvement in all those things. But then people go, "Well, okay, if you don't have anybody in public education in your home, why are you paying for that?" Well, because. Um, if we want to have a safe community, mm -hmm. right. if we want to have families, uh, if we want to have uh, a less crime rate, we want to have all the things that come from a, a, a tight-knit community, educated, working community, then we can't just you know, complain about the culture but then gut out something right. that our, my kids aren't involved in. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to th be community minded as mm -hmm. a whole. And so, you know, I, I, I'm for, we have great parents in all three of those things, mm -hmm. but it's thinking about the community as a whole. You pull your kid out of the, out of, uh, the public school, maybe homeschools, right? But you don't support the public school system. So now you've got a kid who uh, isn't in school when should be. He uh, maybe has addiction issues, the things that come with that. He's driving a car. Your homeschool educated kid is now impacted by a community of a kid that, that's, right. that's been a part of a kid who didn't have all those things that he, sh that he could have had or should have had. So, you know, you're thinking of yourself, but we need to think about a community sure. as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and one of the things, Lisa, that we've talked about the relationship we've had for a number of years, which um, we've had the privilege of working together at different levels, mm -hmm. addressing specific things. But I, my impression is, is that you all, uh, as a board and as a team, have really tried to um, support the conservative values that we have within Kootenai County, especially here in the North. Mm -hmm. And so could you give us some practical things that you guys are doing? Because I, I know there's people that are moving in from different parts of the country and they're, they, they have their own experience and some of their experiences are legit, hard, hard things that I would not even want to deal with. Um, what are you guys doing to represent the values in this community, number one, to make it, number two, a safe place uh, and number three, a place where kids can actually thrive, mm -hmm. because all three of those have been challenged in other states pretty hard. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah. yes. Um, well, I guess I would start by saying um, 
and I'm going to piggyback off of what Jim just said. Uh, <clears throat> parents in Idaho have a lot of options when it comes to how they're going to educate their kids. Um, and I'm 100% in favor of, of parent choice. I just always want Lakeland to be at the top of the list of choices for parents. And, um, and I graduated from Post Falls High School. Um, they didn't have any openings when I was done with college. And so I applied in Lakeland and went out there thinking I'll teach here for a couple years and then go back to kind of what I know, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I love Post Falls. But I got, I, I spent my first couple of years in Lakeland and realized I, I really, f I feel at home here. This, the values here resonate with who I am as a person. Um, and uh, so I've, that's always been a part of who I am as an educator. I, I, I really believe that our schools should reflect the values of our community. And as the leader for the district right now, that's something I really strive for. So mm -hmm. in saying that, to answer your question, Jim, um, our board, has done such a good job of making sure that parents are in control of what happens with their kids at school. One, we've worked really hard to keep politics out of schools from both sides. Mm -hmm. it, we're trying to use um, what is wholesome, what is, I mean, we're, we need to teach them how to read, write, and do math. We don't need the political slants and, the, and those controversial kinds of issues. We don't need that to do those things. So. They've done a really good job um, of, of working to keep that out. So mm -hmm. when we're um, buying new curriculum, mm -hmm. every textbook that we put in front of a kiddo is read beforehand. And if there are um, any things, any passages within those books that we're not comfortable with, we either take that out. We've shelved things before. You know, we, we are very careful about what we put in front of our kiddos. Um, when parents uh, register their kids for school, they, they, we have a library form and the parents actually get to choose what genres of books um, they're comfortable with their kids reading. And that information goes into the system. And so if a parent doesn't want a student to be able to read anything that has to do with magic, um, and they bring a you know, Harry Potter book to the counter and the librarian says, I'm sorry, you're, you, can't, you can't check this book out. Um, Parents are in 100% in control of those kinds of things. If we have um, standards and lessons, because we are a public school system mm -hmm. and we are required by law to teach the standards that the state has provided for us, if there are standards within, you know, science or a different um, subject area, health, mm -hmm. yep. that parents want to control the dialogue around. They can opt their kids out of the lessons in class. We can provide an alternate um, assignment, and then the parents get to direct the conversation at home. Mm -hmm. So, um, it which is the right place to have the conversation? Uh, absolutely, right? there yeah. are yeah, absolutely, and there are some parents who don't know how to have, especially around health. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to have that conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and want them to participate in the conversation at school. But other parents want to take that as an opportunity to say. This is what we believe. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we think this fits. And to kind of allow their kiddos to develop some critical thinking around values and morals mm -hmm. and things instead of just having kids parrot what parents are saying, they actually start to internalize some of what is believed, right? And then uh, you get to have those those conversations in a, in a way that makes sense for your family. So we do work really hard to come alongside families and provide yeah. those opportunities. You, you even have like a, um, a committee that looks at curriculum and with parents' involvement. Mm -hmm. it, as, as involved Every that. month. Yeah. Every month, yep. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I've always appreciated is, you know, y you have those values um, that come from this community and you actually respect uh, even like the church Christian perspective, not just the Christian, but the other re religious views in the area. And you um, have uh, at least considered, and uh, the school dis district has allowed us to have a voice. Doesn't mean we get what we want, 
-hmm. but it's how do we partner together rather than where, you know, I've been when I was in Portland, you know, and other places. Uh, if you were a Christian or you, you couldn't, you weren't, your voice was silenced. Mm -hmm. You didn't get to be brought in, you, you know, and I, you know, I know how hard that is for you folks. What a difficult place because there are federal um, ties to money uh, and state you know, sort of uh, directives, but then there's a levy system. So I, I was thinking about how difficult it is. You've got, fe you have to re meet qu requirements for the federal, but the federal is sometimes mandating things that are contrary to the local, but mm -hmm. then you've got a levy system in the local that's voted on. And now you're in the middle of money that comes from the federal with expectations, money that comes from the, the local that, that, that are in contrast. And you guys have taken on such a difficult task, but I have to tell you, um, you've done it. I just think the school district has done a great job, and there's, Thanks. there's a, you know, Post Falls has done a great job with that too. We're just blessed in this area in comparison to those of us who lived other places to see the kind of conversations we can actually talk and disagree respectfully. And sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And sometimes you guys are well-intentioned, but uh, you know, we were talking about, we're in, as a church dealing with situations that were never situations before. It's like right. new things keep popping up as the culture is <laughs> moving day. 300 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And we think we got it figured out and then something new comes and we're like, whoa, we never saw that coming. They, how did that happen? And then we got to get in a room and then you've got the tension of, if I say this, if we do it this way, are we going to be sued? And then, you know, if I, if you know, how do we deal with the political, yeah. the legal, the, what a, what a mind-blowing difficulty our, even our public school teachers have, who are, you know, it used to be you got more help at home from many, you know, mm -hmm. the teachers and the parents working together. It used to be that the parents actually supported the teachers. It, there's so many things that used to be, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen in some places, but now it's like social work, counseling work, right. uh, educational work. And then people are like, well, how come the educational scores weren't, weren't you know, aren't what they used to be? Well, the culture has changed right. and you guys are all like on the front line. So, mm -hmm. well, I think we're all trying to uh, respond to it without being reactive yeah. in a very pa fast pace, like you said, Jim. You know, one of the things that I appreciate is when there are things that that don't work out the way we thought they were going to work out, that we have the maturity and respect for one another to sit down and actually converse about it and come up with a, a solution. It may not be the perfect solution mm -hmm. because we've got to understand the playing field we're in, but I, I do think that the ability that we have to relate and that parents have to be able to have discussions with your team. Um, I know some of your teachers had a lot of experience with them, and and I know that they are really after um, clarity, honesty, and clear communication. Doesn't always work out that way. We all we all do our best with it, but right. yeah. no matter what system we put together, we put people in it, it gets messy. Right. Yeah. And it's a messy time. And we we as educators are definitely hearing. I've I've got a family member who is teaching in California and she's miserable because she's being directed to do things that don't align with right. what she believes. So I, you know, we know that some of those things are happening elsewhere. What makes me sad is, is people are moving to this area because, because of our conservative values. Um, but they, they have this really negative experience and be, and sometimes want to try to change what we're doing because they don't really understand it and and assume that if it's happening there it's happening here mm -hmm. or if it's happening there mm -hmm. it's going to happen here mm -hmm. um but we are very vigilant about some of those and you know to truth things. be told it could if we're not paying attention right right it's a vigilance. it could it's yes. right. but that mm -hmm. to your point vigilance mm -hmm. This is what we're not going there. This is where we're staying. We're not going there. Well, a perfect example of that is um, our board uh, put a policy in place um, before the state of Idaho wrote their law with regard to bathrooms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and who would use which bathrooms. And so we have a policy on the books that says um, bathrooms will be used by people based on their gender at birth. And then we will work with families of students for whom that doesn't work to find an alternative, but the alternative can't be 
the mm. the bathroom of the Good opposite mm -hmm. of the opposite sex. We have lots of different bathroom options, um, and that's just one small example. And and it's not targeting anybody. It's just really coming alongside every single family, and and saying to our parents, these are not our children. These are your children, mm -hmm. and you know you are entrusting us with the the, the thing that you treasure the most on this planet. Um, and uh, we respect you as parents, and so we're going to work that's with so you. That's so amazing, to, though. To there, there's just not a lot of respect for the parents out there, seemingly, from uh, you know, in, sometimes in the political system, and the respect that the parents have of you, and have skin in the game for a long time. That needs to be. That's just I just love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to uh, maybe say any last comments before we. Um, I just would like to say to the parents um, and the community members who live in Lakeland, if, if you don't have kids in our system, um, Lakeland, Rathdrum, the Lakeland School District area is a great place to live mm -hmm. um, because we have a strong school system. And, and we have enjoyed a lot of support from our community for the, this is my 34th year in Lakeland. Um, since I started, it's always been really strongly supported by the You've community members. You've been after it for a while, haven't I you? I have been, yeah. Wow. Yep. Um, and I'm just still going strong because I, <laughs> you know, I love what I get to do. Um, I love our kids. I love our families. I, I, and I really believe being an educator is a calling. Um, you know, we're servants, and um, I get to serve, you know, people that I wouldn't. I maybe not know going into the store right. that your kiddo is a second grader at Athol Elementary, right. but I'm, I'm, I get to have a positive impact on on your family because you're participating in what we mm -hmm. do, and so um, that's what drives me. And so um, I do think it's important for people to recognize that um, we're. I am very very grateful to be in the district I'm in and to be part. I do. I am a taxpayer in Lakeland. I live in Lakeland. My kids graduated from Lakeland. Um, so I, I have a lot of um, value for what we do. Um, but I also have a lot of respect for parents and the choices that they get to make for their families. But regardless of whether people choose to have their kids in our district, um, we are together all one community yeah. and the public schools do um, provide a lot um, for our community and uh, Everybody benefits yeah. from strong schools. Mm -hmm. So, property tax values or property values stay high. Um, more people want to move in. Um, so, which I know is a problem right now. <laughs> people yeah. are enough people. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, I just I appreciate your time. I love both of you. Yeah. Um, appreciate our partnership. Mm -hmm. um, and I. I look forward to continuing to work yeah, with both likewise. of you. So, yeah, it's good. Anything okay. else, Jim, from you? No, I'm just, I'm, I think this is a unique season that we have with you all. And, um, you know, my, I guess my encouragement, um, even exhortation, if you will, is to get out and vote. Like, I just feel like our, we, we may look at the national scene and go, whatever, there's no hope or we, we could never, we're not, it's not going to, the local scene really matters it does. in all these areas. It does. And, uh, and I, I don't know um, the support of the um, public school system within our community is really important to the health of our community. It yeah. truly is. And I can, I can say that we are doing good things for kids. Yeah. We, um, I know parents are worry about some of those things creeping in, but um, not in Lakeland. You know, I, I know the, the Post Falls levy is coming in May, too, and mm -hmm. uh, we have a great relationship with Post Falls as well. And, um, you know, I, uh, we have great teachers in Coeur d'Alene as well. I mean, we have great teachers in all three mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, areas. Uh, they're like frontline committed warriors who don't, who, you know, are making a difference one kid at a time and in one classroom at a time. And so, uh, again, though, I want to say, as as Christians, we support uh, a Christian school. Obviously, we have one here, and there's other great Christian schools in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many great homeschoolers out there. Mm -hmm. um, every family and, and uh, kid is different, but uh, all three of these areas, committed people, are working to uh, 
have our kids ready for the world to, to, to thrive. And uh, I hope our community remains committed to making a difference, not just shouting at the darkness, but building our house from the bottom up, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad we get to be a part of this together. So uh, right. thank you for thank coming you. in and say hi to Lynn and mm -hmm. uh, your, the rest of your team. So I want to say to you at Real Life, uh, and for, for those of you who are involved in our community, but maybe don't go to Real Life, maybe you go to one of the other churches, maybe you don't go to church. Uh, we want to say we are blessed in this area. Uh, there are things that happen here that I hope we don't take for granted. Mm -hmm. And I hope we're going to be involved in making a difference. And I, I'm hoping you're going to get out there and vote. And you're going to, uh, you know, people died so that you could have a chance to vote. And it's a privilege. And I think it's a, a responsibility. And I hope you teach your kids how to do that. I hope you do it. And uh, um as we think about this coming levy in this, this election, I want, uh, I want to say may God bless Kootenai County and may God bless America. And uh, uh, thank you for tuning in. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah,